we want to welcome in Dave Kaplan now with the Yogi Berra Museum. Dave, you knew so much about Yogi in so many different ways. What is going through your mind right now as we continue to celebrate his life? Well, it's, it's a sort of a surreal day, Bob and Jack. It's, um, you know, we, um, I just choose to remember the, the, the wonderful uh, times that we, we spent together. I used to go with Yogi to the Yankee Stadium all the time. He'd always stop off in the clubhouse first thing, stop off at Jeter's locker and just kibitz with him. And he just uh, really related so well to today's player. And um, I just love watching him interact with people, whether it be the security guard or, you know, the, uh, the commissioner of baseball. He treated everyone exactly the same. You know, Dave, isn't it amazing you mentioned the connection with Derek Jeter? And Yogi always pointed this out. He's one of those few people who had no problem uh, busting Derek's chops about the fact that he had five straight championships and he was imploring Derek, well, you got to get five straight to really be anything, right? They had, they had a really funny, uh, joking relationship. And uh, Jeter always gave him a lot of grief also that his championships didn't really count because there were no playoffs, there were no extra extra you know, wild card or anything like that, but uh, they they really had a, uh, a a really warm, they really related to each other so well, even though there they were so many years a difference, uh, but the one bond that they I think they had was the fact that they, they both wore that uniform, they both had such reverence for the tradition of the Yankees, um, they were both the ultimate team players, they were selfless, and they both gave and got a lot of respect. Dave, we've talked a lot on this show already about how humble a guy Yogi was. He was that legend that you could reach out and get to know. When you were sitting across from him in the office, did you ever take a moment and say, wait a second, I, I work with Yogi Berra. I work at the Yogi Berra Museum. He is such a legend. Or was it always just because he's Yogi, you were just working with Yogi? It's funny, Jack. I, I did feel that a lot. I go, my gosh, I'm, I'm, I'm driving with Yogi you know, this is the dream of every kid in probably in America to go into a ball game with Yogi, and we went to we went to dozens and dozens. And um, uh, but he didn't make you feel that way. He just treated you like you were on his level. Um, he was so he had such a he was really the personification of uh, just modesty, humility, and integrity. And and I learned so much being around him. I really did. You know, it's funny, Dave, because when he would come into the Yogi Berra Museum and Learning Center, it was almost on a daily basis at one point. And it, it was like his baseball career. He was just taking his lunch pail and going to work. It wasn't like it was anything incredible for him, right? Exactly. This was sort of a second home to him. He, he loved the place. He was very humbled and proud that a, a place would be named in his honor. And he, he took great pride in the work we did with kids and tried to teach him to do th instill the values that he has always exhibited. Uh, you know, with our character ed programs, and uh, yeah, this was a this was a wonderful place for him, and uh, I, I think he got a real kick out of showing guys around when the Don Mattingly would uh, you know come in to play the Mets, and he said, "Come on, man, I'll show you around the place," you know, and uh, it, it was it was pretty cool. A couple of things about the museum, Dave. What do you find that people gravitate towards at the museum when they want to go look at things? And then were you ever surprised that when young kids came in, because you do a lot of seminars and things for young kids at the museum, that they knew exactly who Yogi was? Well, yeah, I, I don't think a lot of people really knew who he was because he played at a time it was before the media age. I mean, television was just coming into people's homes in the 1950s, but... Um, you know, the the one thing that really struck me was, uh, and to this day, a lot of people do not know about his World War II service. I know uh, you guys did a, a wonderful segment uh, years ago on the anniversary of D-Day, and uh, and even he was a little surprised about that because, uh, as he said, you know, I told him once, well, you know, you really weren't Yogi Berra then. You were just a 19-year-old kid, you know, who wasn't, uh, you know, in the major leagues. But, um, you know, his life, it was a storybook life, and, and really the... You know, embodiment of the American dream. You know, a young kid growing up during the Depression, never got a formal education. You know, served his country, uh, and just became the cornerstone of the the greatest dynasty in American sports. So I think uh, Yogi is an example to all kids that they can be anything they want um, if they love what they do and do what they love. And uh, you know, he's he's the proof of that. 
Dave, even after his playing and coaching and managing career were over, he obviously remained a big baseball fan. I remember a couple of years ago when we were there for our hot stove show, he was talking about Eduardo Nunez and said, <laughs> this kid really needs to bunt a little bit more. With all the time that you spent around him, what were some examples of him showing off that baseball knowledge? Well, he... Um He'd ask me to look things up every now and then, but uh, he, he had, you know, he had a, a computer for a mind. Uh, you know, for a good kid without a formal education, he was an absolute genius in baseball. I mean, you know, you've, you've heard Craig Biggio say that I've never met a smarter man in the game than, than Yogi Berra. Um, I think the one thing uh, that I always loved talking to him about was, you know, little game instances. How did you pitch at Ted Williams? And, and, it, and he would recall certain games. It was just amazing the recall that he had and just how much he immersed himself into doing everything it took to, to help the Yankees win, whether it be calling a game or just preparing. And uh, he, he was just, a, you know, again, I, I think genius is, is, is an apt description of, uh, of Yogi Berra. I think that's a great word. And, and Dave, I'm going to go back to that time that we were at the museum doing Yogi in a movie back in the 05, 06 era. And it, it's not like he wore Yankees wins and losses on his sleeve, but he'd come in and he'd talk about wasted opportunities. And it was almost like he was sitting on the set with Jack and I breaking down a game post game because he'd talk about all those elements to a game every time he'd show up at the museum. He was, he was interesting, and I, I think I understand the, why he was so successful. You know, he had that great quote, 90% of the game is half mental. But I think what he was really saying is that don't overanalyze. Just do what comes natural. I mean, this was a, one of the greatest clutch hitters in the history of the game. He always felt the pressure was on the pitcher. So he always seemed like continually coming through in the clutch for the Yankees. Um, he seldom struck out. If I could see it, I could hit it. Um, and he just he just played the game. It was a, it was a simple game. He worked hard at it, and he just felt like you know he was not a big big fan of all the you know the data and you know sabermetrics and and things like that. He just thought baseball was a game that if you if you put your mind to it that you could succeed. And and he you know, obviously was proof of that. Dave, I'm glad you brought up the 90% of the game is half mental because Yogi was known for so many priceless quotations. What was his take on the fact that some of the things that tumbled out of his mouth became things that people decided that they were going to repeat for many years to come? Well, he, there was a little, it was a sort of a naivete or an innocence about him in the sense that he never knew he was saying these things that we, we all found amusing. Um, you know, he... Yeah, we'd, we'd say to him, and I know his family has said to him, I know his, his sons have told me, Dad, you said another one. Well, what did I say? <laughs> you know. Uh, so they just, he never knew he said things that, uh, you know, they came out funny. But when you think about it, Jack and Bob, there was a, a lot of subtle truth to uh, the things he said, you know, and the way they illuminated, you know, life in, in general. I mean, why buy good luggage? You only use it when you travel. I mean, doesn't that make sense? <laughs> it, it absolutely does. You know, I'm curious, You, it, when people find out you worked with Yogi and are a good friend of his, they probably inevitably ask you, did you experience any of your own Yogiisms in the office? Did you? Oh, gosh. You know, I, I have. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just... My mind is uh, drawn a blank right now, and I, and I know as soon as I hang up, I'll, I'll think of a couple. But, uh, you know, he, um, he had a funny way with names. You know, he sometimes called Mariano R Riviera, you know, and <laughs> things like that. And, uh, you know, and um, he, had, he had one friend. He, you know, he, he was funny. He said, yeah, I got that, my, my buddy George Costanza coming over. And it was, it was, it was another name. But uh, uh, he, he was just he was, he was just a delight. And, um, you know, he, oh, and he, one time he said he got, you know, an honorary doctorate degree from Roger Marish University. I think he met Roger Williams. <laughs> you know what was great, Dave, though? You always had a Yogi decoder, right? You could always figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I know what he was talking about. <laughs> All right, Dave, thank you so much for joining us. Always great to be with you.